What's up guys, Tech Lab here. Now in our previous video, we took a look at the motherboards that we purchased for our new testing rig. This is an Intel Toel Gen board, and just like all of the LGA 1700 socket boards, it actually came with a bit of an issue. Now that issue is resolvable, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how you do that. Let's just take a quick look at the issue we've got. Because Intel, in the new latest versions of their CPUs, made the CPUs actually bigger, they had to change the socket itself. Now lengthening the socket actually causes issues with mounting coolers and there's an extensive video on this by Gamers Nexus which is brilliant so you should go check that out if you want to go and see more in-depth views of why it's happening. As a basic view, because of the actual length and size of the socket, you can actually have trouble mounting your coolers down here and it can affect the thermal performance of your CPU. Using the standard socket, because of the way that it actually works, when you're mounting a cooler, you can have an uneven distribution across it, which can cause issues. And even if you don't see them straight away, over time, it can actually cause a bend in the board, which can not only disrupt the thermal capabilities of your actual cooler itself, but it could also potentially damage the board, as well as bending the actual board itself. It can actually disconnect some of the pins from the CPU, so your machine may not work properly at all. Now a lot of tech tubers out there have actually seen this problem particularly when it comes to using memory because suddenly a channel of memory wouldn't work and that's because to get the contact that they need they've actually had to tighten down their coolers so much that it's bent the pins underneath. Now to begin with we don't actually have the CPU for this system yet we've got a bit of a temporary one and that temporary one is this. This is an i3 processor, it's a 12100F, and we bought it because we're not really sure what CPU we're going to be running in this yet, but we wanted something to get it up and running anyway, so at least we can get things installed. And these were recommended to us as something pretty fun, particularly for the budget gamers. They're supposed to be super fast, and we really want to find that out, so we're actually going to be fitting one of these. Now taking a look at these two different processors, you can clearly see the size difference there is. This is an older Intel CPU, which is on the 1500 socket, and this is one of the new 12th gen LGA 1700s. So there's a lot more pins on them, so they had to make them a lot bigger. Being that it is an i3, we probably won't get any kind of thermal issues on here, but we wanted to make sure that we actually fix this problem straight away. And to do that, some clever spark has actually come out with a new contact plate. This is one that we actually purchased for our ITX board, but we never got around to using it. So we're actually gonna pinch it and install it onto this one so that we can get the system running. The contact plate itself is actually just a machined piece of metal that replaces the current socket. It actually goes over the top and we'll need to remove that socket first. The one we have here is actually from Thermalrite and they've been tested against the more expensive ones by other YouTubers and they actually perform quite well. These will cost you roughly around 10 to 15 pounds, whereas the more expensive versions will cost you up to 50. Obviously adding 50 pounds to the price of a motherboard is not something we want to do. So we thought we'd go with the Thermalrite one because at least it will give us that little bit of protection. What else you get inside the box when you purchase these is some more thermal paste. I'm not sure how good it is from Thermalrite, but I'm sure we'll see. Although we don't actually have to use it because we're gonna be using the stock cooler from the Intel. So, and they already come with thermal paste on them. And you get the tool that you need to be able to remove the current socket. So what we'll do is we'll start removing this socket. We'll get the CPU installed and we'll get the contact plate installed as well. So the first thing we'll need to do is actually remove this contact plate. If I remove this protective plate carefully because we don't want to actually damage anything, we can see that our pins are inside that socket there. When removing these, make sure that you're careful because you're going to have to actually remove these screws from the corners and then the back plate, it should stay on the board hopefully. It won't go anywhere but we'll place the board down anyway. But we don't want to accidentally drop anything onto those pins because obviously we'll create some damage. To remove them, obviously we need to undo these screws. They're not that tight on a normal socket, so they'll come out with ease. Just loosen them all off and remove it all together. The socket itself will come out in two parts. We've got the uh, flip down lid part there, and we've got the arm piece here, and we'll remove that too. You obviously want to keep them safe because if you need to replace that socket at some point, you don't want to uh, lose it anywhere. Next, we just need to install the CPU. So we'll install that the right way around. And hopefully now our pins are protected because that CPU's down. And then we can start to install the new bracket. It just simply goes over the top and it threads using the normal screws that came out straight back down into the back plate. Now these contact frames will work with both 12th gen and 13th gen. So don't worry about the fact that it says 12th gen on the front. It's just that that's when these things came out. 
but we'll start putting these screws down. And remember, we want a nice even pressure down, so we'll put one in at a time and then we'll start screwing them corner to corner, a little bit at a time until the pressure's all the way down. Now that we've got our contact plate actually installed, it's not looking too bad. I like the actual fact that I bought a black one because it blends in well with the board, although you're not going to see it once the cooler's on. And as you can see, it just makes the CPU just sit slightly higher than the actual frame itself, so, so the cooler has got enough space to be able to touch it. Now hopefully this will actually fix the problem with this board and we won't get any issues, particularly in thermal capability with the CPU. It's not as important, like I said before, with the i3 processor because you can pretty much cool these by blowing on them. But when we do come to install a new CPU, it's gonna be a much higher rated CPU. So we'll wanna make sure that this bracket gets returned. Now, if you do have a 12th or 13th gen board, or if you are looking to get one, I would advise you actually purchase one of these. You can get them from higher brands, as I've said before, but they are much more expensive. The thermal rights seem to be a pretty fair and reasonable price. And if you want to go and check them out, we'll make sure we put a link in the description below. So go and have a look there. But for now, this is actually how our board looks. We've got the contact plate installed. It's gone straight into the back of the motherboard, into the standard back plate and everything is nice and secure, ready for our CPU cooler to go down. Let me know in the comments below, do you actually have a 12th or 13th gen board and have you actually installed one of these? If you have, which brand did you go for? It'd be really good to see if there is a major difference between them, even though I did check some of the videos out beforehand and these seem to be pretty standard. We're gonna go away now and actually install our cooler. We've got the new SSDs turning up today, so hopefully we can get them installed and we'll get some RAM into it and then we're gonna get this up and running installed into Windows and start moving all our games across. We're gonna be doing some comparisons with this board and this kind of setup with our current system, which is running a 5600G, that's an AMD Ryzen processor. And we're gonna see if the Intel 12th gen can actually compete with it. From what I've found out so far, I believe that it's actually going to uh, compete quite well. So again, we'll make sure we do a video on that. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna see that video and then we'll catch you in the next one.